Hello, I am David W. Parker. This is Programming Today. I learned Svelte Kit series. Svelte series, we're going to be looking at endpoints and Node.js, no JavaScript on part two of three. And in this episode, we're going to be mostly looking at uh, Node.js and we're going to clean up our endpoints just a little bit. And so let's go ahead and look at our demo. So you can see I still have no uh, JavaScript disabled on, on here. And so if I'm clicking around, you can now see I have this registration. You see sign out settings comes back. Uh, you could see the form is gone. Now if I click on this, I'm on post slash new. If I click cancel, it doesn't do anything because it doesn't exist yet. I can go click edit and you can see here's a post that I can say I'm editing. I scroll down, you can see there's certain ones that don't belong to me, so I can't edit them or click the edit button rather. And can still sign out. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we did to enable this with no JavaScript on. So the first things first, I sign in, I have two cookies now. I have one for JWT and then one for my user ID. Now something to be aware of is we're not really leak leaking anything with this ID here. It's just to hide and show edit buttons. Uh, we're not using that. We're going to be using our JWT and our AUD still. So we are still secure. It's just a little, a little quick thing because you know I would normally show that in local storage anyway, or use that via local storage to hide or show these edit and delete buttons. Um, one thing to note is edit or delete still doesn't exist. That will be in the next episode. So we've changed quite a bit here. Let's go ahead and just kind of bounce on through on a high level. So first thing we're going to go into is stores and hooks. I have a few stores here. One just to check real quickly if JavaScript is enabled. I don't really need because I have it via any of these stores working or not. A logged in one, which is false, and a user ID one, which is just defaulting to zero. In our hooks here, I'm going to be going ahead and in the context, I'm going to be going ahead and grabbing cookies and then checking if the JWT one is present the user ID one is present and setting those to logged in and user ID respectively within get context. Get session is just going to be going ahead and setting them as well within the session. So that'll make those available to us within bum, 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 layout. So first thing to note is I'm going to import my stores. And then here in the load function, I have the session. I'm going to go ahead and set to the logged in as well as user ID within the load function. And that'll be run on the back end and not just the front end. So that way they are accessible to us with JavaScript off. So now that we have those, we can use those. So here's a couple things that I've done real quick on elements. You could just see here, I have Node.js and logged in, clearly tiny over here. It's kind of hard to see over here. And I'm doing this via the ternary to check on or off. This one is using the class uh, functionality that's built into Svelte. So you can apply a class by saying class and the colon and the class name, and then some true or false here. So this is just logged in, true or false. We'll give that class. If I'm logged in, click sign out. I look at that again. It's say no JS because it's not true. So. That's it for how we can have access to things. Now we can start using that all over the place to do the cool things like hiding and showing our form again and making sure that we don't have everything um, just with if statements via the Svelte if statements. I still have this convert to form for non-JavaScript users here, but I am using the class hidden. So I'm adding the hidden class to each of these. So for logged in, if you're logged in, you don't need to see sign in. If you're logged in, you don't need to see register. I could probably just group these together too. So those exist together, and then sign out and settings exist together as well. So I'll just move this around a little bit. So settings sign out. So nice little, you know, super simple way to apply a class. And of course, we did need to import that store. So if you don't know already, just import that store from our stores. That's the nav. 
in the sign in page here. Let's see what do we change. We have we're gonna make sure we set logged in to true as well as that user ID is gonna be set from the user ID JSON on the way back. And of course, that is just so when we have JavaScript enabled, we want it to all still work. I sign out first so I don't have separate AUDs. Now if I refresh the page here, you can see it has my animation. Things all still work. And so we need to make sure we're setting those stores on sign in. And let's go ahead and continue to look at these other pages. So we have uh, posts new. How does that show up? How does posts edit show up? Let's go ahead and jump over to a post card for that. So we have this post card. Well, so for the new, it's going to be on the index page. So let's look at that first. So I still have this if show, and that's going to have this little form here. So that's kind of nice. So my JavaScript enabled users can have this nice enhanced capability. And then for my friends who have JavaScript off, sign in. It's just now a link. So this is the form that's going to show or hide the on click prevent default. That was all there before. And then this is going to go ahead and say, hey, if we're not logged in, it's still hidden. So of course we have to import that store. And then it's just a link otherwise to post slash new. Now this allows you to have a separate page where your users can go ahead and still input a form, say, cool, works. And it posted that to this page here with cool works. So very, very simple. Again, just had to have import logged in. So show or hide, it's uh, hidden. When I sign out, it doesn't have that as well. And then let's go ahead and look at the post form. One thing to note is we have this new shadow true here. And that's really only used for the JavaScript enabled folk. Post form, which is this little area before. I could do this with the uh, other version here where I add classes based on shadow. As far as I recall, there's not a way to add a bunch of them at once. So I just did it this way. I'll have to double check the docs though on Plainsfilt to see if that's the case. And then right now, this update doesn't work, as I said before, and that's because I'm only posting to slash posts here. And I'm going to be needing to make a put request eventually. So we'll do that on the next episode. Now, within our post cards here, you can see we want to make sure that we're still showing the edit and update, respectively, for when it makes sense. So we're going to go ahead and import our user ID on our post card. And then we want to go ahead and make sure that we scroll down here. We're going to say hidden if that user ID is not the same as the post user's ID. Same with the delete, hidden. Now this, of course, doesn't prevent your users from going into the HTML and looking at this and showing it. So you need to make sure that on your back end, you still always check that it is from the respective user. All of that's already provided via my JWTs and all of that's secure via the JWT cookie and AUDs in my headless CMS. So I'm fine there. And we're going to go ahead and have this do the same thing as before, which is that prevent default to toggle the form. And then otherwise have this destroy here. And, or excuse me, and that's on the destroy as well. This is going to be a form, but we haven't converted it yet. This is a link to post slug and then the edit. So with no JavaScript on, again, it goes to this page, posts, and then some ID, edit, and you can see it's there already. And if I try to edit it, it's just going to create a new one right now because I don't have editing working yet, which I already said. And then, of course, this still works with on these other pages if, say, your JavaScript user somehow manages to get to these other pages. They all still work just the same. Log in again. And if I click Edit here, you can see this still works just like it did before. Let's say I go here. And then I click edit. 
This still works just the same for those uh, JavaScript users. So, and actually this one won't because it's trying to do the put request unnecessarily. But if I do the new one, let's see, new, it's new. They post created successfully. So when I go ahead and I do the update, that'll make that other one work as well. And you can see hi you is still there. So what else did we clean up here on the post endpoint? We'll have this the form data here, the sign in endpoint. We've started to convert it, and we will do the same for the post one in a moment, which is so we still have to do this same body thing. But I went ahead and converted the sign in find to be using the I got rid of user login on these, so I'm making sure that the name. Each of the attributes here is matching what is passed in that front end. Let me go back up here. Up here. So I got rid of the user's login. This used to say here's um, like this. So I got rid of that, the user. And the reason for that was just so now within this little function that I'm using, I can call login and then login uh, body. I don't have to do the option chaining to check if there's a user or you know which version it's coming from via the form body version or the other one. And we'll convert the sign in one or the uh, post one in the next episode. And then of course within the um, sign in, we need to make sure we are setting the user ID of the cookie. We have the two different cookies, and then the rest of this is all the same. Haven't changed anything in the index over here. Um, new. So both the new and the edit forms, all basically the same thing. Uh, the main difference is the edit has to load the proper one from our API first. Going to make that API request to the get. You don't have to do anything with an endpoint here. You can make it directly to our API because it's just a open in the blog. Say you have private blog posts or things that don't need to be public, you might need to go ahead and throw that to a base end, uh, endpoint and build something out for that if you wanted to. Um, down here, though, all the rest is the same. The main difference is we're getting that post in from our API to our props post here. So this is exactly like the regular slug. We have a slug here. So that's exactly the same minus the comments part. And then of course the name of this file is lives under slug and then edit with the brackets. So that way it has the proper URL. If I go to the edit here, actually this post. And then I'll just type in slash edit so that we have this URL existing. That's how we have that. We have a post here. And then we go ahead, and this is just the type of the update. The other is type of new. Either of them include that shadow class from before. This one's going to bind the post because we already have it. And then, of course, we're going to have these little statements here for the JavaScript enabled users who happen to get to these pages. So, and then in our delete sign out here, we go ahead and clear out our user ID, both of these methods, which will become one method in the next episode. So both JWT and user ID are deleted when you sign out. So that's it for this episode. Uh, now things work a lot better without JavaScript on. In the next episode, we're going to clean up just a few more things. We're going to add a couple more endpoints for updating our posts, and we'll continue to dig into application as we build it uh, both with and without JavaScript enabled. If you guys like this episode, if you do, subscribe and like. Uh, subscribe to me on Patreon if you really like the content. That's fantastic. And I hope you can go ahead and build out your own applications and this is helpful to you. Thank you. Bye.